So let's continue our discussion on hydration reactions and let's look at the following reactants. Let's suppose we take the following asymmetrical alkene and let's place water that will act as our solvent and let's also add a trace amount, a small amount of our catalyst, our acid catalyst, in this case hydronium. Now if we allow these reactants to react, we will produce the following two products. Product A, given by this structure, this is the minor product, and product B, our major product. So major simply means that this product B predominates over product A. This product is preferred. Notice the difference. The difference lies in the position of this hydroxide molecule. In this case, we have the hydroxide group on this carbon, and in this case, we have the hydroxide group on the next carbon. So what exactly is the mechanism that leads to product A and product B and why is there a difference between A and B? Why is B preferred and A isn't? So to answer this question, let's look at the reaction mechanism for our, uh, two, for our three reactants. So, in the first step for both of these reactions, we have our catalyst acting as an acid donating the H ion to this pi bond, forming the following carbocation. Notice our H atom goes onto this carbon because that will produce the more stable secondary carbocation versus the primary carbocation if the H goes on this side. So we always want to form the more stable carbocation because that will stabilize the intermediate as well as the transition state. So in the second step for the reaction that leads to our minor product A, we have our water acting as a nucleophile. Lone pair of electrons adds to this carbocation producing the following oxonium ion. In the last step that will lead to product A, another water molecule comes by and grabs this H ion away, reforming, regenerating our catalyst and forming our final product A. Now, the mechanism that will lead to product B looks slightly different, and this is known as a hydride shift. Notice what happens in this carbocation. So, in this case, as in this case, we have a secondary carbocation. Now, if a hydride shift takes place, if this H atom, along with a pair of electrons, moves onto this carbocation, we will go from a secondary carbocation to a tertiary carbocation. And this will take place readily because tertiary carbocations are lower in energy, more stable than secondary. And so this is very likely to take place because this both increases the rate of our reaction as well as stabilizing our intermediate product. In the final step, or actually in the hydration step, our water molecule acts as a nucleophile attacking not this carbon because this carbon is completely filled, it's, it's sp3 hybridized. It instead acts this planar molecule, planar carbon that is sp2 hybridized. The lone pair of electrons attacks this empty 2p orbital on the carbon, forming the following oxonium ion. And in the final step, in our deprotonation step, this H gets deprotonated by a water, reforming our catalyst and forming our major product B. So once again, B is preferred over A. Why? Well, because in B, we can have a hydride shift, which leads to a more stable, a tertiary carbocation. And so, in fact, any time hydride shifts are possible and will lead to more stable intermediates, hydride shifts will take place and they will compete with the other product. So in this case, the straightforward hydrolysis without the hydride shift leads to the minor product A and the more favored major product is the hydration reaction with our hydride rearrangement. Now we could also have alkyl or alkyl rearrangement or alkyl shifts. 
and let's see exactly what that means by looking at the following reaction. Let's suppose we have the same exact molecule except now instead of this H group on this N carbon, we have three methyl groups attached to this carbon. So let's suppose we add the same amount of trace hydronium and our water as the solvent. So in the first step, we have the protonation step. This alkyl or this uh, alkene gets protonated, forming the following carbocation intermediate. So this H group goes onto this carbon to form the more stable secondary carbocation. And notice what happens now. In the same way, we had our H atom with the lone pair of electrons that migrated onto this carbocation to form the more stable carbocation. We will have a methyl group that will shift or migrate along with the pair of electrons, forming a bond with carbon, with this carbon forming the following tertiary carbocation. So, an alkyl shift takes place going from a secondary carbocation to a tertiary carbocation. For the same reason that we spoke earlier, this will be more stable, decreasing the energy as well as the transition state, increasing our rate of reaction. Now, in the next step, in the hydration step, we have the water acting as a nucleophile, using its pair of electrons to attach this planar carbon, this sp2 hybridized carbon, creating the following oxonium ion. And in the last step, a water molecule deprotonates this H, uh, regenerating our catalyst and forming our final product, which will be the major product, because this alkyl shift leads to a more stable intermediate, carbocation intermediate. So once again, let's look at our conclusion. Hydride and alkyl or alkyl shifts will take place when possible to produce more stable carbocations. Why? Well, because the more stable our carbocation, the more stable our intermediate and the more stable our transition state leading to that carbocation. Now, the hydration reaction without the shift, without the hydride or alkyl shift, will now be the minor product because it undergoes a reaction with a less stable intermediate. So, these hydride and alkyl shifts won't always occur, but when given a chance to occur, when there is a possibility that these shifts will lead to a more stable intermediate, they will in fact take place and they will compete with the straightforward uh, reaction, hydration reaction.